Hello, everybody. So, welcome to MapKit Exploration 3. This is going to be the final one of its type uh, before we get into kind of making some things with maps. Um, in this one, we're going to do a little bit of work of how we find out information about a whole bunch of locations we may have located on a map. So in the last episode, in the last exploration, you did a bunch of work identifying a series of locations that were important to you and creating a, an array of map locations. And so you did some work taking that array and adding it to a list. Uh, what you have uh, done there is you have created a bunch of locations that are important to you and what we're going to be doing together is putting all of those locations for everybody in the class into one giant array that we can then do some interesting things with moving forward. So this portion of the location list, which is what I have put together for my important locations, uh, is going to be combined with your location list and everyone else's location list in the class to do some interesting things moving forward. So, uh, let's start walking through this particular exploration. So, uh, one thing that I want to point out is that we can use Swift and some things that are built into MapKit, uh, not only to put things on a map, but do some calculations that can be really important for when you're trying to do things with maps. And so, one thing uh, that it can do very easily, and it's built into MapKit, is to make it so that you can find the distance between two locations on a map. And this is not just like a straight line distance. This actually refers to the distance corresponding with having two points on a spherical map going around the entire world. So it's pretty awesome. Um, the way we do this here is we create a location on the globe, CLO location, um, and that has latitude and longitude just like before. Uh, the next thing it says is set this to be the third element of the list above. Um, right now it is the first. To get to the third element, we need to count forward from the current index 0, 1, 2. Um, and this is because I'm looking to get the Lake Farm Park location, which is right here. So the index I need is 0, 1, and 2 to get to the farm park, so I'm going to change this to 2. And so the location is going to be what I get when I uh, take this variable that I've just defined as a map location and I get the location. And so this is where the where Swift is uh, able to do our calculation automatically for us. So I'm creating a variable, distance between phone and farm park, uh, and in order to find the distance, I'm taking the location that I've created for my phone, and I am using this built-in method, this built-in function called distance, and I want to know what the distance is from the Lake Farm Park location. And so uh, let me also say something about Swift here. My choice of naming variables here makes my code fairly readable, because I want this distance between phone and farm park to be my phone's location, distance from the Lake Farm Park location. And so choosing my variable names carefully throughout this has made it so that there's uh, this, this statement in code almost reads like a sentence, which makes that code easy to understand, even if you're not experienced with Swift. And so the last thing is uh, to print out the distance between the phone and the farm park. And so if we run this code, we can see that we get this uh, 10,803.7 or so meters as the distance between phone and the farm park. And so this is actually doing what we wanted it to do. And what you're asked to do on page one is to write code to calculate the distance from the phone to the four locations, uh, the four other locations, so Great Lake Science Center, Hawkins School, Case Western Reserve University, and Richard's Maple Products. I'm just going to do this by copying the relevant code and pasting it between these comments. So let's get to work. Okay, so let's test this out. This is the first thing that I'm trying to do. Uh, let's try this method of doing this 
for the Great Lakes Science Center, and then we'll continue with the others. So if I go to the console, I can see that it's printing out not just the distance between the phone and the farm park, but the distance between the phone now and Great Lakes Science Center. Uh, so now that I have this, I'm going to continue doing this to um, calculate the distance to the other locations on the map. Okay, so you can see here that my, my code is correctly now printing out the distance to all five locations from my list. You note you might notice that I've uh, done kind of an, uh, the same naming structure for all four of these additional ones that I've added in. This makes it very easy, again, to change my code, to copy and paste it, and know what each variable uh, looks like. But what I want you to have in the back of your mind is that this this is tedious. This is the same kind of calculation we're doing four times in a row. And so what I want you to have in the back of your mind is that uh, we have a better way of managing this. We have a way of doing the same thing, the same approach of doing the same sets of tasks over and over and over again, just with different elements of an array. We do this using a for loop. And this is what we're going to do on the next page. So on page two, we have the same location. We have set up a uh, current map location. Instead of kind of using the different names, I'm just using kind of uh, placeholder variables to store the information in each case. Uh, the only difference in each case you'll see here is that I am doing this with element zero, element one, element two, element three, element four. But the names of the variables ends up staying exactly the same. And so running the code, we see that we get the same results as before. Instead of doing it this way, uh, what, I'm, what I'm suggesting is that you use a for loop to do this instead. So uh, I've set up a for loop for you. And what I'm looking for you to do is to uh, essentially use this idea that I've shown you above to kind of say, let me do this with current map location. Um, if I just kind of copy this down here, I, uh, what I can do is actually get rid of that first line, because this first line is referring to a specific element in the list. But the reality is I am creating this variable current map location. I'm setting it equal to every element that's in your list. So it's already doing this for us. So instead, now that I am talking about the current map location, that is my row in that list of, of locations. I'm going to create a variable that refers to the current location. I'm going to calculate its distance, and then I'm going to print that distance out. Uh, and so just to separate these two, I'm going to put in one more print statement and say this is the quick way. And let's run the code. And so you can see that we get uh, the, the, same, the same basic ideas. Um, I'll have to check and see why it might be having a slightly different answer by four meters in that first one. But the rest of them are looking pretty much the same. Um, so we now have a very quick and efficient way to uh, solve this problem. Um, and this actually has that location, uh, that, the solution to page three in it. The next thing that we want to start talking about doing is trying to find a uh, comparing distances to different locations. When you are on a map, you sometimes want to know what is the nearest, uh, the nearest convenience store or the nearest park to the current location of your phone. And so we're going to talk about a way that we can do this. We're going to do this using a for loop. Uh, and so we're going to use that same for loop that we used in the previous step. We're going to take each location in our list. But instead of printing out that distance, we're going to create a list of doubles that just stores the distances of each uh, location in our list. So we're going to do this. 
um, by, again, current location. We're going to calculate the distance between the phone and the location. And then we're going to use this method that's attached to any list or array that we create. And it's called append. And it just means when you have a stack of uh, items already in your list, it means to just pop the current element onto the end. So append, add, add to the end. App, end, append. <laughs> Distance between phone and location. And so we're going to do this for each location in our list. Our list starts empty, and then we're going to fill up that array with distances. And so we're going to print out all those locations. So let's run the code. So if we look in the console, we're now printing out those distances that we calculated uh, before. And uh, this right now is printing out also a message. It is saying that the, the minimum distance from the phone to the location in the list is minimum distance. So this is something that's built in for you. Um, I hope it's obvious that this is not correct, because if these four things are the minimum distance, we should be getting this as our answer. And so the reason we're not is that right now, we aren't calculating the minimum distance. And so what's kind of cool is that an array of doubles has the ability to find the minimum value of elements between them. And so to find this minimum value of those, those items, you just simply call this function uh, at the end. And so you take the name of the array that you're going to do this to, and then attach dot min to find the smallest element. Right now, you might notice that this is getting the maximum value of the distances here. And so to change this, we simply need to turn this into min. So let's run the code and see if it does a better job. Now we can see that this is correctly calculating the minimum distance. Um, and what's kind of neat about the way we've been doing this is let's say I, that is the second element in my list, let's say I just comment out that second element. So maybe I don't want that to be in my list anymore. When I run the code, it's again only going to go through the items in my list that are there. And so it's then going to say, well, the, now the minimum distance to the locations in your list is going to be 10,803. And so this is the nice part about using arrays with for loops uh, because you can change the source of your data and your algorithm, your steps for analyzing that data, data is going to be the same. So on this next page, we're going to use something called a dictionary. And the idea behind a dictionary is that uh, sometimes you want to take a value and relate it to a string. So I've given you an example of a location dictionary. Um, this has a string and it has a distance associated with it. Um, and so if I have this line of code right here, if I run it, let's run my code first. If I look at the result, if I give the dictionary a string, Paris, this tells me what the number is associated with that string within our dictionary. So for the location dictionary, I put in a string. Um, and it tells me, if it can, what the distance is. But you'll notice that um, New York is not in my dictionary. So when I ask it to give the, di the, the distance or the number associated with New York, it actually gives me nil, which means there isn't a value. There's no value associated with that. And so what we want to do is we want to put together a dictionary that has the distances to specific locations because we want to know the location name that goes with a given distance. And so I've started putting this together uh, here, phone location dis uh, dictionary. 21724 is GLSC, 19451 is Richard's Maple Products. And so the dictionary can tell us which location, if we know the distance, the dictionary can tell us which location um, refers to that distance. Uh, put away. And so what this is asking us to do is uh, to add the remaining locations from the previous page to this dictionary. This is a simple step. We just want to add the other things in. So we have uh, Hawkins School. And if we go back to our previous page, what I can do is I can copy these five distances and I know that my distances are the Great Lake Science Center, Harvard School, Lake Farm Park, East Western Reserve, and Richards. So um, I can, I'm just going to paste these into a, 
into an array there. So Great Lakes Science Center is first. Richard's Maple Products is this 19451. I guess it, it probably would make sense to do these in order. I don't have to with a dictionary. Um, Hawkins School is number three. Or is it number two? Good question. Maybe I should paste that too. So. Okay, so now at least I have all the information together. So my first one is Great Lakes Science Center. The second one is uh, Richard Maple Products, which is the last one. Hawkins School is the second one. So that's going to be 5471. Um, Lake Farm Park is the third one. So that's 10806. And the last one is Case Western Reserve. And that is a distance of 14,481. I'll do that rounding myself, 14,481. Okay. And uh, so I'll delete that. Okay. And it's giving me an error. What did I do? So somewhere, oh, oops, I have this backwards. Um, so in my location dictionary, I'm realizing I want to be able to put in the distance, and I want this to return me a string. So for both of these, I actually have this backwards. So I'm going to fix that. So that error has gone away. And so now uh, let's let's change this around and let's just make sure that if I put 14481 in and I run the code, I should get Case Western Reserve University. Okay, so we'll check it out. I click here, and sure enough, I get Case Western Reserve University. So now I know that my dictionary is working correctly. All right. Um, in this last one, this is what we want to do. We want to we want our app to tell us from our location which of our locations is closest to where we are. So uh, we're going to combine all of these things together into one piece now, uh, and we're going to do this um, by following this step. So. Uh, first thing, we're going to create a distance locations dictionary. So we're going to create this. We're going to make this dictionary on the fly. Um, and so what we're going to do is we're going to go through all the locations in our list, just as we did before. We're going to get the location that we're currently looking at. We're going to get the distance, and then we're going to add that distance to the distance uh, array. Um, that uh, we've put together up here. So we have a distance to locations array, and we also have a distance locations dictionary. And so what we're going to do is we're going to put a location into the dictionary using both of those two pieces of information. So uh, this is my dictionary. I'm going to create an entry in it where the entry in that dictionary is the distance. And I'm going to set that equal to the string that refers to the location that we're looking at. So uh, if I calculate that the distance to the library is 4,000 meters, this will be 4,000, and this will be the title of that location, which you know over here might be library, or if I'm doing this row, it's going to be GLSC. So that's the idea. So I am doing this with this for loop. The next thing, we're going to find the minimum distance like we did on page three, as you can see here. And then finally, we're going to use the dictionary to find the name of the location that is this distance away. So all of this is done for you. 
The, uh, the only thing I want you to notice on this page is just that we're putting everything together and making it so that the code is finding which uh, title, which location name is closest to where our phone is currently located, which has this latitude and longitude. So let's run the code. And so we'll look at this statement. Maybe it's easier in the console. This will tell us that the closest location in the list to the phone is Hawkins School, which is 5,471 meters away from the phone. And it did all of that very quickly. Um, and so the, the last thing that I'll point out about this before we get to the last page is that this right here, this location of the phone, this could be anywhere in the world. And uh, so we would want to make our code as uh, uh, flexible as we can make it. And so this idea, this idea of having asking the phone what is your location is a whole separate topic that we haven't even talked about yet. How do you ask the phone to tell you where in the world you are? And so there are a whole bunch of things that we're going to be talking about with respect to this uh, as we move forward. But this is kind of the next piece of what we want to be able to do because we've done a lot of work with maps, a lot of work with locations. Um, but this one so far, your location um, is one that we haven't played with. And your location might change as you are walking around. So as you're walking, you might find that uh, the nearest park or the nearest convenience store changes as you walk around. So on this last page, the idea is that you're going to uh, go to our collaborative document and you're going to grab a whole bunch of locations, a whole bunch of them. Uh, to make it really worth it, I'm telling you to use 20 or 30 of them. Um, I'm asking you to get the latitude and longitude of a point on your map that isn't right on one of the locations. So you can just do a two-finger click on a map and get the location and use the latitude and longitude that way. Um, and the final thing is that line 28, based on doing this, this is, this is the code from the previous page, this will tell you which location on your, uh, from your list is closest to the location that you pasted here for the location on your phone. And so this is just designed to show you that uh, this code right here does everything we've talked about in a very small amount of code. And so I'm hoping that that has a little bit of, uh, I don't know, I'm looking to impress you most, uh, uh, like uh, I do most days. So I hope you have fun with this exploration. Um, hope it works for you. As always, let me know if you have any questions.